Welcome to the Good Old Days of Radio Show. This is John Tifteller. It's Tuesday, it's Comedy Day, and fair warning here. I read a lot of the Facebook posts related to old-time radio, and there is vast disagreement over this particular show that we're going to feature today. There are people who love it, and there are people who hate it. So, depending on what category you fall in, you may want to skip to the Thursday show or go back to a previous show or do something else. But those who like it, and I'm one of the ones who really like it, you can be entertained. And what I'm referring to is Fanny Bryce doing the character Baby Snooks. I think it's brilliant. I think she was wonderful at it. And I think they were extraordinarily well, extraordinarily well written and performed. Some people find it highly grating and annoying and refuse to get into it. So if that's you, go away. (laughs) It's going to be about 35 minutes or so of baby snooks today. And what we've done to make it all snooks all the time, so to speak, is we have taken excerpts from one, two, three, four different programs, and it's just the Fanny Bryce and uh, Hanley Stafford Baby Snooks and Daddy skits from that particular program. The program was called Good News of 1940. It was sponsored or basically produced by MGM Studios. And Good News, I think, started in 36 or 37, somewhere in there. And they ran for until, I think, 1941. So this is either the, the last season or the next to the last season. And uh, Hanley Stafford and Fanny Bryce came on doing uh, Baby Snooks and Daddy skits somewhere around 1937 and did them in most every one of the programs. Now, the programs themselves, (laughs) I fall into the category of someone who's not real wild about that show. Sometimes it's good if it has Judy Garland on it or some some big star that's interesting. Uh, But most of the time, I found them kind of like filler and patter all basically there to promote MGM movies. Now, some of those MGM movies are great. That's fine. But it wasn't, the most, to me, the most exciting radio show. However, the most exciting portion of the Good News of 1940 radio show, for me, uh, was the skits with Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks and Hanley Stafford as Daddy. So we have taken uh, four of those and we're going to just run the little skits. Not exactly back-to-back. I'll, I'll pause a bit in between each one. The first one is from November 30th, 1939. And in this case, Baby Snooks gets to learn a lot when Daddy tries to buy life insurance. So here we go. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is Fanny Bryce's Baby Snooks. <laughs> Well, a daddy, played by Hanley Stafford, has decided to try to get some life insurance. They'd rejected him a few weeks ago on account of his blood pressure. But he's been uh, sort of watching himself closely, and today he feels confident. As the scene opens, we find daddy in his study talking to the insurance doctor. Listen. I hope I can pass this time, doctor. I think you'll be all right, Mr. Higgins. It's just that your blood pressure was a little high last time I examined you. Yes. But since then, I've taken your advice. I don't let anything excite me. Good. Now, if you'll just fill out this form while I get cleaned up, I have to give you a thorough examination, you know. Okay, Doc. You can wash right down the hall. Right. Now, just relax. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. (laughs) Oh, you won't find my blood pressure high this time. (laughs) No, sir. Uh Now, let's have a look at this form. Mm -hmm. Print name, age, place of birth. Mm -hmm. Hi, Daddy. Oh, hello, Snooks. Uh, You'll have to leave me alone for a few minutes, dear. All right. The doctor's here, and he's going to examine me. Are you sick, Daddy? No, I feel fine. I'm trying to get some insurance. What's insurance? Well, insurance is a form of saving. As long as I live, I pay money to the company, and if anything happens to me, the company gives the money to my beneficiary. Why did she get it? Why does who get it? Benny Fisher. I didn't say Benny Fisher. I said beneficiary. And now, Snooks, can I ask you to go out and play? Mm Mm-hmm. You can ask me, Daddy. Well, I'm asking. Well, I ain't going. That's fine. Look here, Snooks, I mustn't lose my temper today. Why? Because my blood pressure will go up. If that happens, they won't give me any insurance. What's blood pressure, Daddy? 
Did you ever see my face get red and my veins stand out? Uh-huh. Well, that's caused by a contraction of the blood vessels and arteries when there's any emotional excitement, resulting in hypertension. Is it? Yes. It's very complicated, but <laughs> it can be compared to a freezing pipe. Now, you've seen the pipe sometimes in the winter when they freeze up, and no water can get through. Then we have to send for the plumber. Uh-huh. Well, the same thing happens in my body, and you know the result. We send for the plumber. <laughs> no, I sent for the doctor. He's here now, and you'll have to go. Well, what's blood pressure, Dad? I just told you. Why does my face get red? Because you holler at me. Yes, that's right, and I don't want, want to holler at you like that. <laughs> so just go away and let me fill out this form. What form? This paper I have is an application for insurance. I must answer all these questions before the doctor examines me. I want to help you. I don't need your help. Oh, just leave me alone. Now, let me see. Weight at birth. I guess it was nine pounds. But you're so little, Daddy. Little? That's big. Oddly enough, when my father was born, he only weighed two pounds. Did he live? No. <laughs> Mother's maiden name? Uh... Daddy. Yes? Do they have to weigh all the babies when they're born? Yes. Why? I don't know. All I know is that they weigh them before you take them home. Do you have to pay for them by the pound? Oh, leave me alone. Snooks, don't you want me to have any insurance? Mm-hmm. What's insurance? I told you it's a protection against trouble. I have a wife and children, so I must be protected against trouble. When did you get in trouble, Daddy? When I got a wife and children. <laughs> huh? Nothing. Now, don't ask me any more questions. I'm starting to feel bad already. Your face is getting red, Daddy. Sure, you see, my pressure's going up. Now go away and let me fill out this form in peace. Any member family mental disorders? Huh. What is it, Daddy? Oh, it's a sanity clause. Is he going to get insurance, too? Who? Sanity clause. Sanity clause, Daddy. No, not sanity clause. Sanity clause. They want to know if anybody in my family is crazy. Uh, <laughs> what are you going to tell them, Daddy? What do you mean? I'm going to tell them the truth. Will they still give you insurance? Why, of course they will. What are you hinting at? I don't know. Well, I wish that broken down doctor would hurry. Where is he, Daddy? He went to clean up. I guess he must be taking a bath. <laughs> I know my pressure's way up now. The place ain't red anymore, Daddy. Oh, no? No. Are you sure it's not red? No, it's purple. Yeah, I knew it. Oh, what's the use? I'll never get that policy. What's the policy? Daddy? Insurance. I've told you a thousand times, insurance. So what's insurance? Oh, look, for the last time, I pay a premium to the insurance company. If anything happens, they pay me. Last week, this company paid $10,000 for 50 broken arms. What do they want broken arms for? <laughs> they don't want the broken arms. Then why did they buy them? Nobody buys anything. Every time there's an accident, somebody gets paid off. <laughs> Yesterday, a man breaks his leg, gets $500. Today, somebody else breaks his neck, gets 1000 Do you think you'll be the lucky one tomorrow, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with luck. For every type of accident, you get a certain amount. How much? Well, they give me $2,500 if I break both legs and sprain both knees. Why? Because that's insurance. And I can get a flat sum of 3000 if I wave the knees. <laughs> How much do you get if you wiggle your ears? Oh, uh, why am I driving myself crazy explaining this stuff to you? Go on, go on out and play. Oh, I don't want to die. Sorry I took so long, old man. Have you been relaxing? Oh, sure. Hello, mister. Well, hello, little girl. Is this your pride and joy, Higgins? <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> Her name is Snooks. Uh, how would you like to stick around and watch me take your daddy's blood pressure, Snooks? Are you the plumber? <laughs> no, he's the doctor. Oh, hurry up, Doc. I can't hold out much longer. Okay, just let me wrap this around your arm. You seem a little nervous. Has anything happened? <laughs> Not a thing. <laughs> no, not a thing. Good. Now, let me adjust my stethoscope. Now, watch, Snooks. I'm going to pump your daddy's arm up. <laughs> oh, I like it. Now, keep your eye on this little column of silver. Now, watch it rise. 
It's going up, Daddy. Oh. Hmm. A hundred and eighty. A hundred and ninety. Two hundred and twenty. <laughs> it's still going up. <laughs> Curious. Make it hit the top, Daddy. <laughs> Wait a minute, Doc. Tell me one thing. Certainly. If my blood pressure is going up because I'm restraining myself, would it go down if I gave vent to my feelings? After a little while, I think so. That's all I wanted to know. I think I'll go now. Wait a minute, you! You little... <laughs> okay, Doc, now take my pencil. Well, no, I never... Well, I see one thing in there, and that is, I had forgotten about this, uh, the fact that he always has to slap her or spank her at the end of the skit. Um, I don't think that would go real well these days, but anyway, it was it was fun. Um, they also stole a joke there, the Sanity Clause joke, stolen from George Kaufman and the Marx Brothers in The Night at the Opera. Cute. Okay, one more from the following week, December 7th, 1939, kind of going in order here. Uh, in this one, Daddy and Baby Snooks buy a building lot in the subur- suburbs. I guess they want to build a home at some point. So here we go. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Fanny Bryce's Baby Snooks. Well, Daddy, played by Hanley Stafford, has decided to become a landowner. After many days spent with real estate agents, he's just about decided on a certain piece of property in the suburbs. As the scene opens, we find him with Snooks, giving the lad a final once-over before closing the deal. Listen. Well, Snooks, this is it. I don't see nothing. Oh, of course you don't right now, but once I start to build here, I'll make it exactly like heaven. Where are you going to get the angels? Uh, well, I've got you and little Robespierre. And Mummy. Yeah. Well, I don't have to make it exactly like him. Huh? Nothing. Oh, give me a home to rest my weary bones. A plot of land I can call my own and a few chickens and cows. Ah, oh, Snooks, I'm a dreamer. Mama you ain't gonna like it. Oh, maybe not at first, but I think I can make a change of mind. You really is a dreamer, ain't you, Daddy? Well, never mind about that. Now, just look at this piece of land. Why, I can run 20 head of cattle here. Twenty heads? Why, certainly. Cows. Twenty head. What about the other ends? That's how you refer to cattle, Snooks, by the head. Now, look over there in that meadow. See that cow? Uh-huh. That's a Jersey cow. How do you know? Oh, I can tell. Can you see his license plate? <laughs> no, silly. Jersey is a certain breed. All cows have names. Can I call him Charlie? No, you can't call him Charlie, because it's not a him. It's a she. All cows are females and all bulls are males. Why? Because they are. (laughs) And just look at that cow, so contented and sleek. Did you ever see anything like it? Uh Uh-huh. And selfie. Oh, stop it. What's those things on her head, Daddy? Horns. Horns? Yes, of course. (laughs) Which one did she blow, Daddy? She doesn't blow those horns. She was just mooing. Why? I don't know. Let's walk around the place. Well, I sure hope I can get it at my price. What's your price, Daddy? Well, they won $5,000 for it, but I offered them free. If they let me have it for $3,500, it's a steal. Let's steal it. (laughs) Well, I'm awfully glad you like it, Snooks, because it's going to be a big selling point with Mother. Is it? Yes, indeed. Now, listen. When we get home, you tell Mother you think it's a wonderful buy... And I'll be able to convince her. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> no good. <laughs> well, why not? Because it ain't wonderful. Well, what's the matter with it? There's nothing on it. But I'm going to put something on it. I'm going to build a perfect house, not a single floor. No floors? Not one. What are we going to walk on? <laughs> oh, I mean it'll be perfect in every detail. Oh, Snooks, you've got to help me sell Mother on this. I'm hungry, Dad. Well, we'll eat in a little while as soon as I get through with the real estate agent. He'll be here in a minute. No, I want to go. Oh, listen, Snooks. Don't start to carry on now. I drove 80 miles to see this man, and we can't go until I've seen him. No, I want to go. Oh, this is a pretty kettle of fish. I want to go fishing. Now, stop that. 
Oh, look, Snooks. Here's where I'm going to put the driveway, and the house will go here, and right back there we'll have a chicken coop with a lot of chickens. Chickens? Thousands of them. And just think, you'll be able to see just how the little chicks come out of the eggs. Won't that be wonderful? No, I want to see how they get in. <laughs> you would. Huh? Nothing. Now, look here. That's a lovely blackberry bush. I want some blackberries. No, don't touch those. Why? Because they're still green. How do you know? Well, don't you see they're red? You said they're green. That's right. When a blackberry is red, it's green. When it's red, it's green? Yes. What color is it when it's black? Blue. Huh? Certainly. A blackberry isn't really black. It's a dark blue. When the fruit first comes on the bush, it, it's green. No, it ain't. It's red. I know it's red, but you say it's green. Who says it? I do. Why? Because it's a blackberry bush. And a red berry is always green until it's blue. Then it's black. <laughs> you feel all right, Daddy? Daddy? <laughs> I knew that was coming. How hungry! Oh, listen, dear, I promise you we'll eat very soon. Now go chase that butterfly. Quick, catch him for Daddy. All right. <laughs> oh, I wish that agent had hurry. Now let me see. I could landscape the front of that house for around 80 bucks, and uh, after that I could go... <laughs> oh, Snooks, what's happened? I fell down. Oh, look at your dress. <laughs> it's all covered with... Snooks. What are you smelling me for, Dad? It's oil. Oil! The land has oil on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Don't say it. I've got to buy it before that real estate agent finds out. We'll be rich. Here comes a man, Dad. Yeah, that's the fellow. Now, don't say a word. I won't Just won't bear me out in whatever I say. Uh, hello. Hello, Mr. Higgins. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Mortgage. I've, uh, I've just been looking the land over. Pretty stiff price, you're asking? <laughs> oh, I don't know. You can't tell what it'll be worth in a few years. This your daughter? Yes, wonderful child. Yeah, she certainly got her dress all dirty. I fell in... Jam, jam, that, that's jam. Jam? Uh, yeah, yes. I always smear it on her dress when I take her out. It keeps her from getting hungry. Oh, Daddy. Yeah. Kind of a strange notion, but I'm not going to tell you how to raise your kids. <laughs> no, I'm just here to sell property. Well, of course, I, I don't really want this land. Well, I have a customer But that... my wife likes it so much, I, I'm going to buy it. Oh, Dad. Okay, Mr. Higgins, I have the deed with me. If you'll just write out a check for $5,000, I'll... What's that smell? It's me, mister. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, it, it's her. She always smells that way. Uh, she's, uh, she's spoiled. It's nothing at all. Here's the check. Now, give me the deed. Yes, thank you. Well, good luck to you, Mr. Higgins. You've got a fine piece of property here. I'm quite sure of it. Goodbye. Goodbye. I never saw a guy in such a hurry. <laughs> Snooks, it's ours. We're millionaires. Are we? You bet. Now, quick, show me where you fell in the oil. Right there, Daddy, under our car. <laughs> under our car? Mm-hmm. Oh! <laughs> I wish I was dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cute. Next one, the following week again, December 14th, 1939. Again, Good News of 1940 is the program. And on this one, Baby Snooks gets psychoanalyzed. So see how that goes. Maxwell House presents Fanny Bryce's Baby Snooks. <laughs> Poor Daddy, played by Hanley Stafford, has his hands full again. His silver cigarette lighter is missing, and he suspects his loving child had something to do with its disappearance. Uh, Snooks won't admit it, uh, so we find them both at a... I haven't got the heart to tell you where he took us, so just listen. Snooks, dear, I'm going to give you one last chance. Did you take my silver lighter? Is this a police station? No. I didn't take it. All right, I'm forced to believe you. But we'll see the psychiatrist just the same. See who? The psychiatrist. He's a doctor. And your behavior certainly needs looking into. What's he gonna do, Daddy? He'll just psychoanalyze you. Will it hurt? Well, of course not. 
He'll explore your subconscious and break down your phobias. I want to go home. Now sit still. The only reason I brought you here is because you've become so hard to handle. You refuse to go to school, you won't play with your little friends, and worst of all, you make up those fantastic fibs. How you do it is beyond me. Ain't I smart, Daddy? <laughs> yes, very. It doesn't do any good to punish you, and I hope this doctor can get to the root of the trouble. Whoosh, somebody's coming. Look at Daddy. Here comes a man walking on his knees. Yeah. Yes, yes. Is he the doctor? No, I, uh, I think he's one of the patients. <laughs> Shh. What's he crawling around for? I don't know. Hang on to my hand, Snooks. <laughs> Are you scared, Daddy? No. Keep quiet. Oh, oh, excuse me. Have you got a piece of toast? Huh? <laughs> Have you got a piece of toast? Are you hungry, mister? Oh, no, no, of course not. I'm tired. Tired? Uh, no, sorry, no toast. Oh, oh what a shame. I, I must find some. Well, doodle-doo, pip pip Hello, Pip-Pip. Oh, hello, Mr. Higgins. Oh, hello, Doctor. Say, what's the matter with that fellow? He asked us for toast. Yes, poor chap has an obsession. He thinks he's a poached egg and he wants to sit down. Nothing serious. (laughs) 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 Oh, there's nothing to worry about. Come on in, my child. Why, yes, Snooks, there's nothing to worry about. Now, my dear, your daddy has told me all about you on the telephone. I just want you to answer a few questions. First, I Are you going to psychoanalyze her now, Doc? Yes. Just be quiet, please. Oh, uh, pardon me. (laughs) To begin with, Snooks, uh, are you a boy or a girl? Huh? I say, are you a boy or a girl? I'm a boy. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, when you grow up, will you be a man or a woman? A man. Mm-hmm. Now look at me closely. What am I? A train, a Christmas tree, or a bottle of mustard? None of them. Oh, thank heaven. I. Well, what am I? A banana. Uh... Oh, Snooks. What's the matter with you? Why are you giving the doctor these crazy answers? Because he's asking me crazy questions. Well, this is all a part of a test. How can the doctor psychoanalyze... Mr. Higgins. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Snooks, I understand you refuse to attend school. Don't you like to go to school? Uh Uh-huh. You do like going to school? Uh Uh-huh. And I like coming home, too. Well? But I don't like staying there in between. You see, Doctor? A very normal reaction. Tell me, Snooks, do you have dreams? Uh Uh-huh. All the time? No, only when I'm sleeping. I see. Yes. Are they nice dreams? Beautiful. Beautiful, huh? Did you ever dream you were a lark flitting through the welkin? More beautiful than that. Like what? I dreamed I was an elephant squirting water through my nose. (laughs) Very funny. Very funny. Great significance, Mr. Higgins. Oh, sure. Uh, Snooks, have you ever had any dreams about cats? Uh Uh-huh. Tell me, what kind of clothes does pussy wear? Clothes? You know what I mean. Does she wear wool? Does she wear feathers? He's seen plenty of cats. He wants you to say a cat has fur. Why? Because that's the right answer. Are you sure, Mr. Higgins? Why, sir? <laughs> I think so. Oh, excuse me, I didn't mean to butt in. Thank you. Snooks, please remove your right shoe and stock. What for? Eh? I want to examine your brain. Huh? You got to look at my feet to see my brain? I just want to tickle the sole of your foot. <laughs> it's like a game. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> oh, what kind of a test? It's te- just to test a certain reflex, Babinski's sign. Come on, Snooks, take off your shoe. No, tickle me under the arm. <laughs> oh, listen, Doc, is all this necessary? I just want to find out about my lighter. Mr. Higgins, we must approach it very slowly. This child is full of inhibitions. Do you ever hit her? Only in self-defense. <laughs> what about my lighter? I- now, we'll soon find out. I'll give her the association test. But I shall have to ask you not to interrupt, Mr. Higgins. Okay. Now, Snooks, I uh, want you to close your eyes and relax. I ain't gonna close my eyes. All right, just relax. Now, I'm going to mention some words, and as I say them, I want you to respond with the first word that comes to your mind. Understand? No. You do, too. 
He means if he says black, he wants you to say white. Mr. Higgins. Uh Uh-huh, I'm sorry. (laughs) It's very simple, Snooks. For instance, if I say the word hot, you instantly think of cold. Understand? Understand. All right. All along? Uh, No. Yes. He hasn't started yet. Mr. Higgins. Excuse us. (laughs) Go ahead, Doc. All right, Snooks. Now, uh, here's the first word. Top. Bottom. (laughs) I like it. Round. Black. <laughs> Do some more. Oh, keep quiet. You too. Oh. <laughs> Relax, Snooks. Here's the next word. Light. Dark. Joy. Sorrow. Woo. Yep. Oh, what's the use? Please, Mr. Higgins, that word indicates a very important psychic sublimation. Get to the light, Harry. Don't be impatient. Let's continue, Snooks. Oh, I'm going home. Silver. Home. Lighter. Home. That settles it. Mr. Higgins, I'll stake my professional reputation that this child had nothing to do with the disappearance of your silver light. Oh, honestly? Oh, thank heaven. I'd hate to think she'd hold out so long. She's a perfectly normal child, and you can believe me, she's entirely innocent. Can we go now, Daddy? Yes, dear. And I want to apologize for ever having suspected you. I'll never be hasty with you again. No more spanking? No, never. All right. Here's your lighter back. What? Well, I'll be. <laughs> Are you... <laughs> Okay, that was number three, and now we skip to January 4th, 1940. I guess the uh, Christmas show (laughs) wasn't available. I don't know. Don't remember that one. But anyway, we skip to January 4th, 1940, and in this one, Snooks annoys Daddy while he's listening to police calls on his new shortwave radio. And listen very carefully to the voice of the police dispatcher and see if you can guess who that is. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Fanny Bryce's Baby Snooks. Well, Daddy, played by Hanley Stafford, has a new toy. For Christmas, his boss gave him a powerful shortwave radio set, and Daddy spends all his spare time fooling with it. Right now, we find him in his study, listening intently to the police calls. Hope this is a good one. Repeat on broadcast number 274. All cars be on the lookout for two men in green sedan wanted in holdup. Clear as a bell. Number one is described as five foot ten, clean shaven, wearing dark sweater and dark pants, carrying a blue steel revolver. No description on number two. These same men just held up a pedestrian in the vicinity of Clump and Turnwell, were last seen heading south on market. Hmm. That's only a block away from here. Additional information on number one. This man has a scar on his left cheek and speaks in a very high voice. That is all. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on those ruffians for five minutes. Why, I'd tear them apart. Pick them up. Oh, don't shoot, please. (laughs) Did I scare you, Daddy? Snooks, what are you doing out of bed at this time of night? I had to get up. What for? The lamp fell down and got broke. Oh, it did. How did that happen? It happened when I was quietly pushing it off the table with my nose. Now, what kind of insanity is that? Why should you push a lamp off the table with your nose? I was playing Pinocchio. Do you mean to tell me you haven't been sleeping all this time? I was asleep, but my nose was awake. Well, I'll wake up something else if you don't go right to bed. I'm afraid to sleep in the dark, Daddy. Oh, nonsense. Am I afraid to sleep in the dark? No. Well? But you got Mummy to look after you. Never mind that. You go back to your room. All right. Daddy. What is it? When I get married, can I sleep with the light on? No. Why? Because, because only owls sleep in the light. Then I'm going to marry an owl. (laughs) All right, marry an owl. What if he lays an egg in my bed? Oh, stop that silly talk and go to sleep. It's after one o'clock in the morning. No, it ain't. It is, too. Do you think I'd lie to you? Uh Uh-huh. What? Let me see your watch. No. If I tell you it's one o'clock, it's one o'clock. The time is now 9.15 p.m. Who said that, Daddy? Oh, uh, uh, that's on the shortwave set. Uh He means Eastern time. He's broadcasting from New York. JFTR, Los Angeles Police. Oh, uh, guess my watch is a little fast. But it's way past your bedtime, anyhow. Well, why don't you go to bed? I'm listening to the police calls. What's police calls? 
Police calls are just... Now, wait a minute. Here's one. Car 32, in front of the market at 10th and Main. See the woman. That is all. Are you going to see her, Daddy? <laughs> no, that's for the police. They have to see her. Why? I don't know. Is she pretty? It doesn't make any difference to the police whether she's pretty or not. But don't it? No. Why? Because they have a job to do. The announcer calls for car 32 to carry out an assignment, and they do it, that's all. How do they know about it? They hear it over the shortwave radio, like I do. How did we... How do we hear it, Daddy? Through the radio. What's radio? It's exactly like the telephone, only it's different. Why? Because there are no wires. The police broadcaster is 15 miles away from the radio car, but they can still hear him. Does he holler? Nobody hollers! You do. That's because you make me. Now, look, if you don't interrupt, I'll give you a very simple illustration of the difference between radio and the telephone. To begin with, suppose you had a dog 15 miles long. Huh? Suppose you had a dog 15 miles long. Well, where would we keep him? He's not a real dog. I want a dog, Daddy. Do you want me to explain this or not? Want. All right. Suppose you had a dog 15 miles long. One end of it's in the broadcasting station, and the other end is in the car. Which end? Any end you like. Oh, then let's put it in the rumble seat. All right. One end of the dog is in the rumble seat. Where's the middle? The middle is stretched over 15 miles. Don't it hurt him? I told you this is an imaginary dog. So one end is in the station, the other end's in the car. Now, if you kick him at one end, he barks the other. Comprehend? Copperhead. <laughs> well, what do I mean? If you kick him in the rumble seat, he barks in the station. <laughs> right. That would be the telephone. Well, what's radio? The same thing without the dog. Good night, you're going to bed. Good night, no, I ain't. Now listen, Snooks, I'm warning you. Shh. Car 11A in 22's district. Investigators shooting at the elite ballroom at 4th and Hedge. They're holding a suspect. This man might be the same one who robbed the grocery store earlier this evening. He's also wanted for forgery, possible hit and run, arson, grand larceny, and murder. Is that all? That is all. <laughs> hey, you see the kind of people roaming around, Snooks? Now you get in bed where you'll be safe. All right, Daddy. Car 14, at the rear of 166 North Clump, a prowler. That is all. That's our house, Daddy. Yes, 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 so it is. Uh, well, maybe you'd like to stay up a little longer, Snooks. No, I want to go to bed, Dad. Okay. Uh, on the way to your room, have a look if that back door's locked. It ain't on my way to my room. Well, you can stop off in the kitchen and have a drink, can't you? I ain't thirsty. Good night. Well, good night. Kid's scared of her own shadow. <laughs> I wasn't so comfortable, I'd go see for myself. All cars, attention. Two hold-up men in the green sedan have been seen again at North Clump. Well, what are they hanging around here for? A man with a high voice is very dangerous. Shoot on sight, that is all. Hmm. Must be a pretty tough egg if they do that. Stick him up. Oh, don't shoot, I'm a poor man. <laughs> <laughs> it's me again, Daddy. You little devil. <laughs> I ought to give you a sound flashing. Now go right to bed before I do. Good night. Kid's positively fiendish. Wait till I get hold of her in the morning. I'll... Take him up! Snooks, I've warned you! Take him up! Oh, you can't scare me anymore. And if you don't go to bed before I count three, I'll give you a spanking. You hear me, Snooks? This ain't Snooks and reach for the sky. Oh, this is going too far. Oh! <laughs> it's a high voice burglar. Yeah. Uh, don't you, please. Take anything you want. Who's there? Don't squeal. Uh, it's nobody, Officer? Officer? Yes, there's a cop upstairs. I had him come in to, uh, to look at the gas meter. Are you sure it's a cop? Why, of course. But if you leave, I, I won't turn you in. Who's there, Daddy? A cop, eh? Why, I ought to blow oh, you. Oh, please don't. Open in the name of the law. Holy smoke. They're outside. I'm going. After him, Sweeney, through the front. Oh. Daddy, what happened? Huh? Oh, uh, nothing. Terrible burglar came in, but I got rid of him. Did you? Why, certainly. I wasn't going to let that big bruiser frighten me. I took his revolver out of his hand and threw it at him. <laughs> You're wonderful, Dad. Then I pitched him out through the window. Luckily, the cops were outside and they caught him. <laughs> Good thing I was awake when he came in, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Well, come out from under this sofa and let's go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Huh? Oh, how did I get under here? <laughs> I know. Oh, mind your own business. Good night. <laughs> Okay, Baby Snooks and Daddy, Henley Stafford and Fanny Bryce. Producer Daniel made an interesting observation to those people who uh, don't like this character or these skits. It's probably because they never had kids. (laughs) Because, yeah, I agree with that. Because, yeah, you can have conversations very similar with your own little ones that are aged right around say, six to eight, right in there. Very similar conversations as to what's heard on these Snooks skits. So the writers of this show um, definitely must have had children. Uh, I'm not sure if Fanny Bryce had any children. I don't know about Hanley Stafford either. But anyway, they made a, a great pair. Fanny Bryce started out in vaudeville as a singer, continued as a comedic actress, and somewhere along the mid-30s, Uh, She created this character of a little girl, Baby Snooks, and it stuck, and she continued performing it up until her death in 1951. In fact, there's lots of publicity shots of Fanny uh, in a little baby girl's costume that were taken for the show. Uh, So she, um, she, I guess, went to the studio in costume (laughs) because they had an audience, and so she had to make it as believable as it could be. I guess it comes across more believable when you only hear it rather than when you see Fanny Bryce as a 50-year-old woman dressed as a six-year-old girl, but whatever. Okay, that's a salute to Fanny Bryce and Baby Snooks for the good old days of radio show. We'll have some more Baby Snooks in the future. She, she had her own radio show. This, this was when she was just making guest appearances on other shows. But she had her own radio show, which ran for a long time. They're not particularly easy to find. There's not a lot of them out there, but I have a few, and so we can, we can play a few of those down the line somewhere. Okay, this is the good old days of radio show, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.